Welcome back to Long Crime Daily, everybody. Superstar Ed Sheeran defended one of his most popular songs, Thinking Out Loud, in a New York courtroom on Tuesday. He's accused of copying elements of the iconic song, Let's Get It On, by Marvin Gaye. Ed Townsend helped Gaye write Let's Get It On in the 1970s, but his daughter, Katherine Townsend Griffin, is the one now suing Ed Sheeran in Atlantic Records, saying the pop star's song has, quote, striking similarities to what Townsend and Gaye created decades ago. It's not the lyrics the jury will consider in this copyright fight. No, it's the actual melody, the harmony, the rhythm of the songs based on the sheet music. Marvin Gaye's estate is not involved in this lawsuit, but as you might know, has previously won a copyright infringement case against Robin Thicke, Pharrell Williams, and T.I. for the song Blurred Lines. During opening statements, civil rights attorney Ben Crump showed video of a concert where Sheeran sang Thinking Out Loud and moved effortlessly into Let's Get It On. Sheeran countered that he often sings different mashups at his shows. During his testimony, Sheeran said, quote, if I'd done what you're accusing me of doing, I'd be an idiot to stand on stage in front of 20,000 people and to do that. It's my belief that most pop songs are built on building blocks that have been freely available for hundreds of years. Sheeran actually recently won a copyright case in the UK. In early 2022, he went to court in London over his song, Shape of You. Two songwriters accused him of stealing parts of their song called Oh, why? After the judge ruled in his, in his favor, Sheeran put out a video statement on Instagram. Whilst we're obviously happy with the result, I feel like claims like this are way too common now and have become a culture where a claim is made with the idea that a settlement will be cheaper than taking it to court, even if there's no base for the claim. It's really damaging to the songwriting industry. There's only so many notes and very few chords used in pop music. Coincidence is bound to happen if 60,000 songs are being released every day on Spotify. That's 22 million songs a year and there's only 12 notes that are available. Brian, the video of Ed Sheeran doing that mashup of Let's Get It On and Thinking Out Loud, I feel like that might be a smoking gun. Is that re incredibly helpful for the plaintiffs? I mean, your thinking is the same thing that Ben Crumb said, that this is the smoking gun in the case. Now, I would say it's not necessarily a smoking gun, it's more of a spark. It's helpful in front of a jury for sure to see him do it and admit to being able to blend the two songs together. His explanation of how the song was made does help him between him and his co-writer just kind of rifting off of each other. His explanation of his ability to do this, being that he can blend one song together, I think cuts both ways. He is a great artist, but saying it was closer to Van Morrison's song, that was a huge plot twist. I really think it's going to come down to these 12 jurors to see what their common sense is based on what Ben Crump is arguing, but also to see what the argument that Ed Sheeran is making to see if it makes sense. Well, Terry, you were in court today, and you were there when the plaintiffs played an AI version of Marvin Gaye's song, Let's Get It On. What was the court's reaction to that? Well, interestingly enough, it was the oddest thing I've ever heard, and the court saw, thought so too. Everybody actually chuckled. I looked at the jury, and the jury was sort of smiling, but in the courtroom, everyone was more than smiling. They were actually chuckling. And the reason they had to do the AI version was because they filed with the copyright office what's called a deposit sheet. And that deposit sheet really just included chord progression, so they couldn't play the whole song. But they tried to compare Let's Get It On with Ed Sheeran's song, and so thinking out loud, they played Ed Sheeran's song. So when you play the AI against Ed Sheeran's song, it really did sound different. I actually spoke to Katherine Giffen and asked her what she thought about the AI. She said she thought it was a little bit disrespectful. So I'm mm. sure they thought they wish they could play the real song. All right, Terry, we got to get you back in that courtroom for the Absolutely. latest. Absolutely. Coming up on Long Crime Daily, we're looking at two big cases in the hip hop world. Rapper Tory Lanez fights for a new trial out in Los Angeles, and rapper Young Thug's Rico trial is very slowly chugging along. Plus, there's a theme playing a major role in both criminal cases. Can rap lyrics be used as evidence? We're going to hear from Lane's attorney, Jose Baez, and a defense expert from the Rico trial discussing the data and the dangers. back everybody we have several updates this week in the worlds of crime and hip-hop one rap artist continues to fight for a new trial out in los angeles while another rapper's trial can't seem to get off the ground in atlanta let's start off on the west coast hip-hop artist tory lanes was convicted on felony gun charges in december for the 2020 shooting of rapper megan the stallion while leaving a pool party she actually ended up with shrapnel in her foot he faces a maximum sentence of more than 22 years in prison that sentencing hearing was initially scheduled for January, but it's been delayed several
several times as Lane's got new attorneys for his case. His latest defense team filed a motion for a new trial back in March, with the prosecution filing an opposing motion in early April. The judge ultimately set a hearing for May 8th to discuss it. Now, if a new trial is denied, the judge expects Lane's to be sentenced within 30 days of the hearing. This week, we interviewed one of Lane's new lawyers, high-profile defense attorney Jose Baez, about why his client deserves a second trial. One of them is, is the DNA, and the other one are the rap lyrics that uh, were utilized against him, the rapper persona and his creative art form, which I think is appalling that prosecutors are, are trying to use in, in this, in, in many cases across the country. So it, it's a new movement to essentially try to eliminate that type of evidence from coming in because I, I think it racializes the proceedings and um, utilizing rap persona, creative uh, expression and rap lyrics is, puts the accused in a very tough position. And I, I think it's uh, infiltrated by extreme racism and should never see it, it should never see the inside of a courtroom. Prosecutors basically used and, and argued multiple times in his trial that his, he could not say his DNA was not on the gun, when in fact that's not true. Uh, his DNA was not on the gun, his pro, he, they mm. didn't have a profile, he wasn't even considered a minor contributor, and uh, any random African American person from the community could have, could be a more likely contributor than Tory Lanez on that gun. And for someone who allegedly shot the gun five times and was recovered immediately, um, I, I find that to be incredibly exculpatory, especially in today's, uh, in, in today's climate where jurors look for DNA. As you just heard, Baez brought up the use of rap lyrics in court, and that theme continues in our next case involving Atlanta rapper Young Thug and his alleged gang Young Slime Life. The music artist is being tried alongside more than a dozen other defendants on gang-related charges, but so far, not a lot of progress has been made. Jury selection, which started in January, could last into the summer as courtroom disruptions have kept the jury box empty. Proceedings have been held up by everything from absent jurors to searches of the defendants. In fact, just last week, even a defense attorney ended up in handcuffs, causing his client's case to be severed from the other co-defendants. But courtroom chaos aside, a hearing was held this week to qualify a defense witness who says that he's an expert on hip hop lyrics and their alleged connections to things like crime and racism. On the stand, he was questioned by both parties about a study he did on stereotypes. When the lyrics were represented as rap music compared to country or heavy metal, participants viewed the songwriter as having worse character and a greater criminal propensity. Right? Then when those same lyrics were categorized as, as country or heavy metal. So just changing the genre label resulted in these different assumptions about the character of the songwriter. You've never taken a course in evidence? No. And you've never sat through and watched a criminal trial? Correct. Yet you're saying that you are an expert in crime? And stereotyping about race and rap music. And you have something to teach us? Yes. So Brian, rap lyrics, they're being used in both the YSL, the Lanes trial, but are they being used the same way? And overall, do you think it's proper to use these lyrics? Let me answer it backwards. Overall, I do not think it is proper. As I tell people, no one tried to accuse Bob Marley of shooting a sheriff or went after Johnny Cash. But th there's a little bit different. The YSL lyrics are being used as confessions, character evidence, and of a crime bolstering the YSL gang and their power and influence. And it's supported by circumstantial evidence. For Lanes, they are used to prove the ultimate question as to whether or not the crime occurred. And for Lanes, Lanes more so, I think that shouldn't be used. It should be the jury and the evidence, or a jury evaluating the evidence to see whether or not it occurred. I understand bolstering YSL's uh, prominence in the community if that is a part of your RICO charges, but the other charges associated with YSL's music, I think is horribly applied in this case. And as we've seen, there's a bias between one form of music and others. Terry, Baez brings up these two arguments for Lanes to get a new trial, the rap lyrics, the DNA evidence, which do you think stronger? I think they're 
both strong, but I think the rap lyric is, is probably a stronger argument. Look, for the DNA, you can cross-examine someone. You can say that it shouldn't have been, you know, included because it might not have been his because of the odds and the statistics. But I don't think that that is a large enough reason to win on an appeal. I do think the rap lyrics, I uh, kind of agree with Brian, but I don't think they should be included in any way, shape, or form. It's an artistic expression. It has nothing to do with the case. It's not relevant. I mean, I think the examples that Brian gave were great, but you know, even if you look at a show like How to Commit a Perfect Murder, yeah. if you look at that show, frankly, what if one of the actors was accused of a crime and they use that against them? It has nothing to do with it. All right, slippery slope. We'll see.